Evening from Beijing and good morning and good afternoon to colleagues and friends in the Americans and the Europe. I'm uh, Yes Ali, Senior Program Officer of EMBA, International Bamboo at Rattan Organization. I'm moderator for today's webinar session on soil and water conservation with bamboo. As you might know that bamboo has extensive fibrance roots and rhizome system that make it suitable for holding topsoils and stabilized slopes to prevent soil erosion. Moreover, high volume of litter forms a protective layer above topsoil and it enhances soil fertility and water recharge. Furthermore, rapid growth and rain growth of roots and rhizome systems improves the soil structure thereby enhance the water recharge and regulate the water flow. So this webinar session will share some recent research results and discuss how bamboo contribute to soil and water conservation around the world. The session consists of two parts. For the first part, we have three presentations from Dr. Rajesh uh, Kusha, Dr. Uh, Joan Carlos Camigo, and the PhD candidate Daniel Ecoto. After the presentations, we will have uh, interactive discussions with these uh, uh, three uh, panelists. And my colleagues, Mr. Chen Chonglong, will moderate the second part. Uh, if you have any relevant questions to the panelists, please just write, uh, write your uh, questions into the chat box. Then we will deliver, deliver, uh, deliver your questions to our speakers. And if your questions were not able to address today, please send us your email. We will respond to you later. Now, to begin with our session, I would like to invite Dr. Rajesh Kusha. He has been working on plantation management and resource conservation aspects of different supportive bamboo species for last 15 years. Currently, Dr. Kusha is working ICOT, India Institute of Soil and Water Conservation, Doradam, uh, India, as principal scientist. He has published more than 17 uh, research papers in different journals of national and international repute. Dr. Rajesh uh, uh, Kusha will present his research our bamboo in relation to soil and water conservation. Please. Okay, I will share here. I need to click play. So thank you, Nexia. I think you are going to play this. Hello, I'm a audible. And I'm a sorry, sorry for some uh, just no voice. So we'll try it. Uh, try again. Just for a second. No. 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 Oh, no, you didn't yes, share. Yes, I know, I know. Please. I'm still uh, mute myself, sorry. <laughs> Yes, internet is not that good. Not yet good. Okay, uh, wait. No, I think it should work. 
Good evening to all the participants. First of all, I would like to thank Imbar for providing me the opportunity to speak in this webinar on one of the most pertinent topics in today's context, that is bamboo in relation to soil and water conservation. In the today's presentation, I'll be presenting some of the key findings of research work on different soil water conservation aspects of bamboos being undertaken at our institute in India. The contents of my presentation will focus on soil erosion and land degradation, bamboo for soil and water conservation with some experimental evidences, bamboo-based soil and water conservation measures or bioengineering measures. It's not only that bamboo is important for soil water conservation, but soil water conservation measures are also important for enhancing the productivity of bamboo. I'll be presenting one case study on this aspect and then some issues in the present day context will be discussed and this will be followed by conclusion. Soil erosion is one of the major factors for the land degradation. Worldwide, about 56% of land degradation problem is due to water erosion and 28% of the land degradation problem is due to wind erosion. In the Indian context, about 68% of the land degradation problem is due to water erosion and 10% is due to the wind erosion. If you see globally, about 24 billion tons of fertile soil is lost annually through water erosion. Why soil erosion is important? Erosion is a natural process occurring over a geological time. However, human actions have accelerated the rate of the soil erosion by 10 to 40 times and it has become process of soil degradation. Soil erosion becomes more important as it takes about 500 years to form 2.5 centimeters of soil. Soil erosion causes large on-site and off-site impacts. On-site impacts like line and soil health, depletion in soil moisture, soil compaction due to runoff and soil loss can lead to decline in agriculture productivity and huge monetary losses. Off-site impacts like increase in sediment load in stream and silting up of reservoir leads to huge ecological and economical consequences. In the context of climate change also, it is projected that 1% increase in intensity of rainfall may lead to 2% increase in erosive power of the rainfall and about 1.5% increase in soil loss from the cropland. Therefore, soil erosion needs to be tackled at top priority as it is major threat to agricultural production ecological and livelihood security. Role of bamboos in soil and water conservation. Any soil water conservation program aims at sustainable production, conservation and providing livelihood security. Bamboos have potential to address all these concerns. The fast growth and annual production of color makes bamboo highly sustainable. In addition, different components like leaf canopy, the roots have been conserving resources efficiently. The multifarous use of bamboo makes it ideal species for providing livelihood security. Bamboo also addresses many sustainable development goals, out of which sustainable development goal number 15, that is life on land, is directly related towards attaining land degradation neutrality and checking land degradation. Bamboo performs several hydrological functions like intercepting rainwater, infiltration, absorption of rainwater, runoff, soil loss, restraints, and evapotranspiration. Bamboo characteristics features make it ideal species for performing several hydrological functions. Majority of research work on hydrological aspect on bamboo is available in temperate mozo species from China. In symposial bamboos from India, no systematic efforts have been undertaken so far to screen the best hydrological species. Keeping above in view, a project has been undertaken in Himalayan foothills to study the production and conservation aspect of eight different bamboo species. Study is being undertaken at two different sites in Himalayan foothills. Both the sites are about 300 kilometers from each other. 
and five species are common to both the location bambusa barbua bambusa bambos bambusa newtons dendrocalamus hamiltoni and dendrocalamus strictus they are common to both the location while bambusa vulgaris and dendrocalamus toxai uh, they are present at location 1 while dendrocalamus asper is present at location 2 only the age of the plantation at location 1 is 6 year while the age of the plantation at location 2 is 12 years and boost due to large and ever thin canopy intercept the rain or in more efficient manner result from the research revealed that interception in bamboo varied from 23 to 34.4% which was much higher than uh, as compared to the broadleaf and conifer tree species the vertical strata of the bamboo plants are further helpful in reducing the kinetic energy of the rainfall and checking the erosive power of the rain drops there by preventing the splash hole further large values of interception in dendrocalamus hamiltoni and bambusa newton indicate the better efficiency of this species for checking soil erosion roots are very important component in checking soil erosion in general root system is categorized into coarse root and fine roots coarse root uh, provides support function to the plant while coarse fine roots helps in binding the soil the result from our study revealed more root biomass in dendrocalamus is there anything else hamiltoni bambusa vulgaris and bambusa bambos mm. results also revealed that majority of the roots in bambus were present in top 10 cm layer this was about 30 to 33% while 70 to 84% of the roots they were uh, they were in top 30 cm soil layer which indicates their role in checking splash and sheet erosion also it was observed that in case of dendrocalamus hamiltoni maximum contribution of about 80% was through fine roots which indicate better efficiency of this species in checking soil erosion higher coarse root biomass in case of strictus and bambusa bambus indicates that the species can be taken for stabilization of slopes in conjunction with the deep rooted trees water stable aggregates and mean weight diameter stable aggregates are particles that are bound to each other more strongly than adjacent particles these are important for physical protection of organic matter in protecting the soil from erosion water stable aggregates and mean weight diameter are critical for movement of water air nutrients and roots in bamboos huge little fall in root biomass following decomposition process produce organic acids that serve as binding agents to hold soil particles together forming aggregates the results also indicated that in young 6 year old plantation both for stable aggregates and mean weight diameter increased as compared to open except dendrocalamus strictus and bamboos and newtons all the species were statistically alike in 12 year old plantation except bamboos and newtons all the species were at par it clearly indicates that even in young plantations bamboos have capability of improving aggregate stability and preventing the soil erosion from beating action of the rain drop soil moisture conservation bamboos due to high annual litter power they are considered very important for soil moisture conservation the decomposition rate of bamboo is low which makes them better mulch material conservation of soil moisture research from china have revealed that leaf of bamboo have high water retention capacity also the water holding capacity of bamboo is about 3 times faster as that of the tree bamboo roots also help in creating pores for storage of soil moisture further the roots are also helpful in better aggregation of soil particles which are critical in improving the infiltration rates litter of bamboos and fine roots on mortality adds significant organic carbon to the soil and also improves soil physical chemical and biological properties the leaf litter of bamboo can also be used for making vermicompost our study indicates that leaf litter fall in the fifth year range from 7.9 ton per hectare per year in dendrocalamus toxai to 12.4 ton per hectare per year in dendrocalamus hamiltoni The values of litter fall in bambusa bambos and bambusa vulgaris were also comparable 
prudent or calamitous hemel to nigh, thereby indicating better efficiency of this species in conserving more soil moisture. Further, higher root biomass in this species also indicate better infiltration rate, which was also evident from the observations on hydraulic conductivity. Hydraulic conductivity depicts the ease which pores of saturated soil permits the movement of water. Higher values of hydraulic conductivity indicates better permeability. Bamboo roots contribute to the development of macrophores by pushing through the soil while they grow or by leaving channels when they die. As compared to the control plot, hydraulic conductivity increased by two times in Dendrocalamus hamiltonii and Bambusa vulgaris in six year old plantation and about 2.75 times in Dendrocalamus hamiltonii in 12 year old plantation. Higher hydraulic conductivity in Dendrocalamus hamiltonii and Bambusa vulgaris thus indicates that these species are better choice for enhancing soil moisture receipt and groundwater recharge. Conservation aspect needs top priority but may not be adopted unless reasonable production is also associated with it. Results from the study read that biomass in young plantation range from 35 ton per hectare in Dendrocalmus toxi to 85.8 ton per hectare in bamboo subalcoa. In 12 year old plantation, biomass range from 49.4 ton per hectare in Dendrocalmus asper to 124.1 ton per hectare in Brambusa neutrons, thereby indicating that species like Dendrocalmus hamiltonii. Bambusa vulgaris, Bambusa newtons, and Bambusa palqua can cater both production and conservation aspect and therefore recommended for the Himalayan foothills. Bamboos as soil water conservation structure. The mechanical properties of bamboos are comparable or much better than many of the timber species. However, due to higher sugar and starch content, degradation in bamboo is much faster. Further, the rate of degradation is enhanced when bamboo is used in open or in contact with ground. Therefore, for any soil water conservation structures, bamboos are always recommended as live material. Bamboo-based conservation structures are ideal for stabilization of gully beds. These structures are also helpful in conserving soil moisture and sit retention. Now coming to bamboo-based structures. First one is bamboo-based life jackets. These are low-cost structures which are useful for stabilization of small gullies. They have been successfully evaluated for the ravine areas in Western India. For making life check dams, two rows of bamboos are planted across the gullies in a staggered manner at a very close spacing of about 2 by 2 meters. The distance between two check dams is kept at 10 to 15 meters. These check dams have been found to absorb more than 80% of rainfall and are effective in reducing runoff and soil loss. PC ratio of these check dams have been found to be 2. Dendrocalmus strictus and bambusa bamboos have been found suitable in the areas having low moistures. Offsets are usually recommended for the establishment of live check dams. And columns grown directly have also shown good result in the Himalayan region. Next is bamboo-based brushwood check dams. These check dams are mainly used for stabilization of small and medium gullies. For making bamboo-based brushwood check dams, holes of easy to root species are selected as posts which are planted across the gullies at 60 cm apart. The strips of bamboos are used as interlinked materials along with other flexible branches. Silt is deposited behind the structures which help in stabilization of gully beds. Further, soil moisture regime is also improved which facilitates the establishment of vegetation in the gullies. It has been observed that poles of easy to root species upon like Dendrocalmus hamiltonii and Bambusa vulgaris upon rooting can act as permanent barriers. Bamboo based silvi pasture system for stabilization of gully lands. This technology has been developed for the habitation of ravine areas in Western India. The technology involved growing of dendrocalmus strictus in gully beds along with sancrus ciliaris grass in the earth spaces. The side slopes of the gullies are broadcasted with the seeds of the grasses. 
The system provides seven ton per hectare per year grass yield from stabilized gully slopes and about ten ton per hectare per year of grass yield from into spaces during the initial years. After seven years, about one thousand poles are ready to be harvested from the system. The system has been found to brought down soil loss to less than one ton per hectare per year from about twenty ton per hectare per year before planting of bamboos. The system can also absorb eighty percent of the rainfall. The BC ratio of this system has been found to be two, thereby indicating good returns. The technology has been successfully demonstrated demonstrated for rehabilitation of degraded ravine lands in the western India. Impact of soil moisture conservation measures on bamboos. So far, we have discussed that bamboos help in soil water conservation. However, soil moisture measures are equally important in establishment of plantation in semi-arid and hilly regions having less rainfall. Despite of experimental evidences of high soil water conservation values of bamboo, its adoption in semi-arid and hilly regions is not very encouraging due to limited soil moisture. Further rainfall in these regions is erratic and mainly concentrated in few days or months. As a result, majority of the rainfall is lost as runoff. Mechanical or engineering measures for in situ rainfall harvesting can be very costly. However, adoption of cost effective trenching techniques can be very useful in establishment of plantation in these regions. This soil water conservation can also enhance productivity, soil moisture regime, and reduce runoff and soil loss and can lead to economic utilization of degraded land. To study the impact of soil water conservation measures on bamboo, an experiment was conducted on 20 to 25% slope in the Himalayan foothills. Majority of this uh, rainfall in this region is concentrated in July to September, which is lost as runoff. Two species, that is Dendrocalamus strictus and Dendrocalamus hamiltoni, were selected. Both the species were grown with three types of trenches, that is rectangular, semicircular, and V-shaped. The storage capacity of each trench was designed to 0.27 cubic meters, and uh, in total there were 562 trenches per hectare. One treatment without trenches were also kept to compare the performance of both species. Runoff and soil loss was monitored using multi-slot devices. Results of this study revealed that growth and biomass of both species improved significantly as compared to control and grown with trenches. In both these species, semicircular trenches were more effective in enhancing growth and column weight. Comparatively, higher growth was observed for Dendrocalamus hamiltoni as compared to Dendrocalamus strictus. Soil moisture was recorded during summer, monsoon, and winter. Results revealed that during both summer and winter, semi-support trenches showed higher soil moisture, which was about 16% higher as compared to control. In monsoon, however, there was no significant difference between the different trenching treatments. Soil moisture was higher by 45% in case of Dendrocalamus hamiltoni and about 25% higher in case of Dendrocalamus strictus as compared to fellow plot invested with Lentana camera. In winter, again, the same trend was observed. Runoff was significantly reduced under all the trenching treatments as compared to control. There was no significant effect of species on the runoff behavior. Further, it was observed that as compared to initial values, there was about 47 to 50% reduction in runoff under all the treatments. Soil loss did not show any significant effect due to planting species and their interaction. However, after four years of plantation of bamboo, there was drastic reduction in soil loss. Further, no soil loss was observed in the fifth year of the plantation. It can be concluded from the experiment that trenching and appropriate selection of species are very effective in enhancing biomass and soil moisture regime. The technology has been successfully demonstrated and is therefore recommended for undertaking large-scale plantation and afforestation program on degraded lands in semi-arid and hilly region. Then coming to important issue, the first one is lack of awareness. Despite a huge potential of bamboo in soil water conservation, it has not been able to find that place in soil water conservation program. 
so far mujhe aapko bhi research on soil water conservation conservation aspect of bamboo is available on mozo bamboo from china therefore there is an urgent need to develop data based on hydrologic aspect of imported bamboo species second is development of bamboo based soil conservation models there is an immediate need to develop and standardize bamboo based soil water conservation model based on appropriate species facing management practices and design which so far is lacking then is utilization of degraded lands bamboo due to large evergreen canopy competes with agriculture crops and are not best choice for arable land appropriate degraded lands therefore should be made available whether under the bureau of forest department or revenue department to list to the interested farm then is assessment of strength and life of bamboo based structures r and d efforts have led to the development of bamboo based soil water conservation structure these structures however need to be evaluated in terms of strength and life cycle in different agroclimatic zone lack of quality planting material this is the biggest issue which restricts the adoption of bamboo based soil water conservation models for example in india dendrocalum stricts is uh, cover major chunk of area due to the lack of availability of other species therefore there is an immediate need to initiate program so that supply of other species can also be maintained payment of ecosystem services based on scientific data it is established that bamboo in water should provide numerous ecosystem services for which there is no incentive for the growers there is an immediate need to develop policy for providing direct incentives to the stakeholders who are involved in bamboo plantation program then is the requirement of multi stream approval this is one of the most important as so far bamboo is only with the forest department and not much work has been done on the soil water conservation aspect therefore a multidisciplinary approach involving scientists from different disciplines is required which can lead to the development of soil water conservation technology for the people coming to conclusions part soil water conservation is a huge problem worldwide and needs to be addressed at the top layer bamboos have huge potential for soil and water conservation the dense canopy vertical strata and middle term helps bamboo in reducing kinetic energy of the rain drops and checking soil bamboos have very efficient root system the majority of the roots of bamboo are present in top 30 cm layer which helps in binding the soil filtering the sediment thereby checking soil erosion and preventing water pollution roots also create pores for moisture storage better aeration infiltration ground water recharge and preventing flood the horizontal extension of rhizome is also very helpful in catching the debris the annual defoliation forms thick humus and helps in retaining rain water conserving soil moisture and improving soil quality litter fall and fine roots upon the decomposition they also serve as binding agent and improve aggregate stability thereby preventing the soil erosion Dendrocalamus hamiltonii and bamboo vulgaris species they can be comparatively better choice for mating in both soil conservation and production needs. And particularly in the moisture deficit semi-arid areas, trenching can be used for enhancing bamboo productivity, improving soil moisture regime, and checking soil erosion. And bamboo-based structures and silly pasture systems they are very cost-effective solution for climate stabilization and should be encouraged. and there is urgent need to develop database and extend the bamboo based soil water conservation knowledge and technologies to the stakeholders so that their soil water conservation potential can be fully utilized the research work presented today is published in the international journal scientific reports of nature science and agroforestry systems of spain here and can be downloaded online the methodologies for monitoring growth run of soil loss and other hydrological properties has been compiled in technical manual which is available online on inbar website my sincere thanks to inbar i fed the good union and state forest department of uttarakhand india for funding the project i would also like to acknowledge the technical support from mr long mr sinachia and mr turai and last but not the least thank you all for sparing your valuable time and patience here thank you thank you very much uh, dr rajesh kosha a very good uh, presentation gave comparative uh, comparative analysis with different bamboo species for the soil and water conservation issues and uh, two species uh, also identified 
uh, as a uh, as a better choice in consideration of their uh, conservation benefits and also the production needs. And uh, uh, bamboo can also be as a live material to provide a cost uh, cost uh, effective solutions for a uh, garlic band spandalization. So uh, now uh, I would like to in invite our next speaker, Dr. Joan Carlos uh, Camengo. Dr. Camengo is PhD in forest sciences. He's a professor and research from the Techn uh, Technological University of Pereira, uh, Colombia. Uh, he's also faculty of environmental science and the leader of the research group on management of tropical agroforestry uh, agro uh, ecosystem services. Dr. Kamengo shall, uh, shall us uh, his study, our contribution of bamboo, our soil and water preservation in Colombia. So Dr. Kamengo, over to you. Okay, thank you, Jensia. Thank you, Lon. And many thanks to Imbar for organizing this event. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, we see it. OK. OK, and a special thanks, of course, to people connected right now to this panel. And I would like to thanks also to Inver in Latin America, to Dr. Pablo Japome, because he has supported our studies here. Today, um, I will talk about the contribution of bamboo to soil and water protections, and I will share with you some experience from the Indian region of Colombia. First of all, I would like to give you an my and first uh, I would talk about the tropical Andes because this is the biophysical context where the studies were carried out. And then when we include the population, uh, we will have a chance to talk about the landscape and ecosystems. And then, because the aim of this event is bamboo, of course, uh, we will talk about the bamboo distribution along the elevation gradient and also within this, this landscape and ecosystems. And at the end of my presentation, I have a chance to show you two cases of study. The first related with the benefits of riparian corridors, uh, where bamboo is one of the more important elements. And the second case is related with bamboo plantation for soil restoration, where we have a chance to monitor the plantation during more or less 15 years. And we can find the contribution of this plantation for restoring soil and landscapes. OK. Tropical Andes are located in South America and represent uh, one important part of this uh, continent because are extended with about more or less 1.5 million of square kilometers from Peru up to Colombia up north. And are interesting because we have here one elevation gradient from 600 meters up to 6,000 meters with snow capy pits, steep slope, deep canyons and valleys. That, that means that we have many possibilities of having a, a micro habitats and also because the location between Amazonian area and the Pacific coast, it is interesting in terms of possibilities for organisms and, and biodiversity. But the main factor related with this condition are the geological process and also climate cycles. Geological process like the tectonics and volcanics related, for example, for volcanic eruption and also with volcanic ash and flooding that create um, many possibilities of soil conditions. OK, when we go to the northern tropical Andes, we can find Colombia. This is my country and is where I will talk today about our uh, our case of a study. And Colombia has a, a very important portion of these Andes. And here, Andes are divided into three rich or 
branches that we call in Spanish cordilleras, and we have also two intervalleys here. And there is important because most of population is located there. Uh, it means that are demanding natural resources and maybe are generating the impact on natural resources also. And in this area is located the capital Bogota, but also other cities like my city that is Pereira. And today I will talk about this. This is one image from Pereira where we can see the described condition. We start in the valley at about 900 meters above the sea level, and we can go over almost 5,000 meters above the sea level. We can see different kind of ecosystem from Nibal to the Premontan wet forest. We have also uh, an important area dedicated to urban uses that is important because here are concentrated more or less 500,000 of people living there and demanding food and water for this ecosystem. Here we can get different landscape, a different ecosystem and with different conditions. For example, annual precipitation start with 1000 and we can have that over 2000 millimeters per year and also we, we can have different temperatures. If we see this image in other uh, direction, we can see more or less the same. This is from west to east and we can have a big, big portion in the lowlands related with agricultural landscape where people is transforming uh, land uses. We have different activities related with agriculture and providing food to the city that uh, occupied at a small area but intensive and are demanding food, but from the highlands are demanding uh, water. So this is a very important area that has been protected because uh, the city needs to guarantee the water supply to the population. So we have different ecosystems, different conditions, and this is more or less the dynamic of landscape and ecosystem in this city. Okay, but my presentation should be about the bamboo, and I would like to show you how is the distribution of bamboo in this region and in this context. It is very important to see this elevation gradient because this is the limit for many of things that we want to discuss today. After over 2000 meters, we have the protected areas and maybe we have the better condition for the ecosystems. And these areas, we can find species from the genus Ripiducladum, Aulonemia and Chuskea. These species are scattered and are within ecosystem, are part of other natural ecosystems and fulfilled with important functions, but are not the principal species, are just part of this ecosystem. And we have here small problems in comparison with the lowlands. Below 2000 meters, we have the city and we have the agricultural areas. And here we have more problems. And here is interesting because forests are dominated by the bamboo species Guadalangusifolia that fulfilled with a role of a natural ecosystem with the deep forest. And the focus of my presentation will be to talk about the guadua. If we see the arrows here, we can see that the, in the lowlands we have a bamboo, in this case the guadua, that this is dominant within ecosystem. And here we have another species that are part of the ecosystem. In the highlands, we have a conservation areas with focus on water resources. But here in the lowlands areas, we have more problems related with the urban expansion, agriculture and population and contamination. OK, as the first of the area is the urban part of the city, I would like to talk about this. In Colombia, we have um, in each city is a mandatory to have a instrument for land planning. This instrument is the territory ordination plan. And of course, Pereira has one. This plan should be updated every 12 years. And this plan is very important because it's the guide to orientate the land use for the local governments. And within this instrument, we can find the principal ecological structure that define the areas where should be 
conserve it in order to get the balance between the urban areas and the natural conditions. In this case, in Fort Pereira, is included, of course, the protected areas, but also within the urban areas, we can find that the bamboo forests are included in two kinds of soils, soil for conservation and soil for protections. So that means that we have here the possibility to find the bamboo uh, playing a good role for protection and to avoiding problems related with risk and hazard, especially related with flooding and maybe some landslide because we have a relief with a steep relief here and it sometimes is can become some problems to these areas. If we go to the zone here, we can see the role of this forest ecosystem along the city that fulfill very important functions that are related in this cave with protection and conservation. In this area, in the urban area in Pereira, we can have more or less over 100 hectares of bamboo forest in corridor distributed along the city. Okay, and when we go to the rural areas, that is maybe where we have more bamboo there. Bamboo is along the streams, and it is interesting because shape and riparian ecosystem and this riparian ecosystem are important because have a good effect on hydraulic dynamic of water in this stream and protect of course soils to effect of agriculture but in some cases farmers have removed this bamboo from these areas and it is not a good idea because we can have problems related with this if we see this image, we can see that here bamboo has been removed from this corridor and we can say that the stream almost disappeared in these areas. So for that, it was uh, a motivation to assess what happened in this area. In this area. So we started to research about the condition of soils when bamboo was removed and other areas with bamboo. For that, we assess more or less 50 sites where we have a chance to monitoring soil hydraulic properties grouped in three kind of indicators related with porous, solid and aqueous phase of soils. And we use indicators like the soil compaction, bowel density, porosity, compaction susceptibility, soil aggregated stable to water, also, we use hydraulic conductivity, permeability, and soil water holding capacity. We measure this indicator in 50 places where we find um, pasture and also in other areas we find bamboo. So we evaluate the first 30 centimeters from depth, and these are some results of about this study. For Soil compactions, we have here um, two lines. The green line represents wadwa or bamboo. And here it is very interesting to see that the low values are better uh, indicators. So this is the depth and this is the resistance to soil to be penetrated. So we can see that here we have a low values. And if we, hope, if, if we go to the, see the susceptibility to compaction, we have another condition because they represent that the soil required to get the total compaction. We can see here, we need uh, more space to get this, the total compaction. So what is better also here. And if we see the ball density that represent more space, the low values are also better for what. So here, we can see that this condition represents a better capacity of water and air movement through soil under Wadwa soils. And if we see the other set of variables, we have a total porosity that represents more space, of course, and Wadwa is a little bit higher, but significant. And if we see the type of soil porous, it is interesting because we can see that also this is the total is higher, but if we focus on macro and meso that represent better uh, condition for water and air movement, we can say that the proportion of this porous under water is higher. 
And if we see the soil aggregator resistant to water, it's interesting because the proportion of bigger or larger aggregates are under water and it represents two conditions. Better aggregation, that it represents more porous space, that in addition, it is also lower susceptibility to erosion. So we can get to better condition here. And finally, when we see the aqueous phase, we can see two indicators that represent the flow of water and air within soil. This is permeability and this is hydraulic conductivity. And we can see the group of um, values are higher in water than pastures that represent good flood. And also if we see hydraulic conductivity, also we, have, we can get the significant higher values to water forests. And Finally, if we see the soil water uh, holding capacity that represent regulation and retention, we can say the WADWA permits a better water dynamics in soil represented by higher flood with this indicator and also with air retention related with soil water holding capacity. Okay, after this result, it is important to consider how uh, these corridors that are repairing ecosystem can contribute to the, the good dynamic of these areas. But it is very important to consider that to promote the restoration of these areas, it is important to include other species because if we generate uniformity only planting bamboo, maybe the functionality is not the best. So the proposal to restore these areas has been always using bamboo but other kind of species. At the end, we can find corridors like this, trying to connect forest ecosystem and other areas. Okay, we have still some pasture that sometimes are not the best, but the landscape could be compensated with this kind of corridors. Okay, the second case of the study is related with the Guadua plantation. It is other approach, but it is also trying to get restoration of some areas and also trying to find benefit of soils. In this case, we select two areas, one with pasture and another one with coffee plantations, and we started this plantation in 2002. And then we assess and monitor different variables, including productivity, carbon and growth, but today the focus will be related with soil conditions. And this is the image after uh, we planted these areas. We can see which soon, this is the area in 2002, and this is in 2016, and this is also in 2017 when plantation was established. And you can see that we can get a good connectivity between these areas with natural uh, uh, forests, and it is also a good role for this plantation. This is the plantation with pasture established in areas with pasture, and here we can see the plantation established in areas with a uh, coffee. Okay, and of course we have a chance to monitor um, also soil conditions for the plantation established in pasture areas. We have a soil compactions. We can see the blue line represent the, the last result after 15 years of establishing. We can get the better results. The low values are here. And if we see the total porosity also have a good conditions uh, after 15 years and of course bulk density, uh, that means that we could increase the porous space to improve dynamics of water throughout soils. And also we see the same effect in the other uh, farm when we start with coffee. Uh, we increase uh, the possibilities of better uh, in conditions of for porosity, for bowl density, but also we reduce the soil compacted. But here the effect was less significant because the soil with coffee was uh, in better condition than the, the pastures. Okay, in this study, we have a chance also to assess uh, soil chemical properties like pH, soil organic matter, and total basis that represent fertility within these soils. And we measure in 2002 up to 2017. 
So we have the data from uh, two funds and we can see the indicators. But here it is very important to see that uh, for the FAR or plantation we, where we establish in areas with pasture, maybe we can find some changes in pH and soil organic matter and also infertility. But in coffee, we can see that the changes were, um, we can see that there are no really changes. Is we can say that maybe the conditions are stable. And it is interesting because we start with a soil in good condition and we can keep this condition along the time. And of course, uh, sometimes coffee receives fertilizer, so that means that maybe uh, after wild plantation, it, it fertility of soil uh, could be decreased. Okay. And now we have some final consideration about these uh, studies. Um, bamboo fulfill uh, roles according to the landscape and ecosystem where it is located. Even in urban areas, we could see this and we can uh, we, we have the species in the highlands and also we have the species in the lowlands. And according to this distribution, we could see that the bamboo full different roles in to protect soils and water. And in those areas where bamboo was dominant, uh, the role was still better in importance in benefits, especially in corridors associated with riparian areas to soil and water protections. But it is important to remark that if, the, if we want to restore the function and to get a good restoration product, we should include other species associated with bamboo and because it is no good to promote the uniformity in these uh, natural ecosystems. And regarding to the studies uh, related to plantation, bamboo grows well in plantations and improved soil quality. And, but the changes were notable in these areas where soils were degraded. Is, is this the case of pasture? In coffee, we have some results, but it results were more interesting when we have the degraded conditions. And it is another important thing that these results come only years after establishing. That means that we cannot get changes in few years or a few months. We need to wait, so it's better to avoid to degrade soils. And finally, why wild plantation are a good alternative to connect forest fragments and therefore to improve landscape conditions. OK, this is my presentation. Thank you for your attention. And if you want to get more information about the case of the study, the first you can find in the website for Cathy in Costa Rica in the journal uh, Natural Resource and Environment. And also the second case you will be able to get in the Inbar website is in the booted bamboo for land restoration. We have a case of a study there. Thank you so much. And if you have questions and comments, uh, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Camigo shared us the two cases to show how um, the super capacity of guado bamboo to improve the soil quality and control the soil erosion and also permit a better uh, water dynamics in the scenario of improving forest uh, ecosystem services and also restoring degraded lands, increase the landscape uh, uh, connectivities and conditions. Thank you very much. So uh, now I would I invite our uh, last uh, speaker, uh, Daniel Akoto uh, uh, Safo. Daniel is a final year PhD candidate in University of Bonn, Germany. He holds a, a bachelor um, degree in natural resources management and a master degree in agroforestry, all from the uh, Kalm, uh, Chroma University of Science and Technology, Ghana. He is currently a senior lecturer and a coordinator for the graduate program in the Department of Forest, uh, of Forest Science in the School of uh, Natural Resources of the University of Energy and Natural Resources, uh, Sione, Ghana. Daniel will present us how bamboo improves soil and economic benefit from bamboo-based agroforestry case 
case in Ghana. Daniel, please. Yeah, thank you, Jesse and Long for the invitation and grateful to Imba for the invitation for this seminar. Uh, as said, I've been presenting a uh, study I did in Ghana for my PhD as the uh, second objective of my PhD on bamboo effect on soil and uh, agronomic performance of three stable mm -hmm. crops mm -hmm. in Ghana. And then from there, uh, I can make special okay. appreciation. Now it's okay. Hello? Can I continue? Can continue? Yeah, please continue. Hello? Yeah. So let me please continue. Mention continue. To Professor? Let me make special contribution and appreciation to Professor Meister, Christian, Christian Sex, Dr. Manfred Dennis, Dr. Pate, and Mr. Michael Kweku of Imba, Ghana, who played key role in, uh, and were very instrumental for this research. Now, now for I will begin by categorizing it into five sessions. That is the um, a bit of background where I can situate the work and also uh, give another background information in literature about um, the institute application where um, natural inputs on soil. Yeah, sorry for the hitch there. There was a technical hitch. Yeah, that's part of the challenges we have in our part of the world. Sorry about that. We, we yeah. couldn't load so your me... presentation up there. Can you share your presentation again? Okay. Can you see it? Um, now we see it. Yes. See it? Yes. Oh, okay. But so, uh, it didn't but, come up. Maybe we can only share presentation in the future of you. But can you see it now? Uh, we see it, but we couldn't load it here. I think maybe internet from Zhao is a bit quick. Really? Mm. Yeah, now we can see it. So yeah, can you show the... Yeah, we now okay. we, we can share the presentation, but uh, we only share the presentation uh, with how you uh, presenting it. Okay, please come, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so let me go back the background. I want to show the effects of bamboo on soil and water conservation per institute. That is in the natural stance of bamboo, what bamboo can do. And then bamboo in applied use, more or less exit to application of bamboo, where we can apply bamboo for soil and water uh, issues. Then I present the case study and finally I conclude. Yeah, there are several uh, bamboo species. I have come across over 300 different species, and all these species present different benefits from the bamboo. But one unique thing is that all these different species have almost the same effect on soil. And that makes bamboo a very unique plant. So in Ghana, most common species that we find across in Ghana is bamboo vulgaris, Zitentara abyssinica, and lately, bambuza bakwa and some more others have been introduced. And for my case study, I used bambuza bakwa uh, in an agroforestry system with three food crops in Ghana. Now, for the institute application of bamboo, naturally, the, this uh, feature shows that bamboo can cohabit with other plants, and that can improve biodiversity. And biodiversity has been reported to have significant effect on soil properties. The second picture shows the massive production that can come from bamboo. Bamboo produces enough litter that can improve soil organic matter. It can also improve soil microorganism activities to
to the provision of carbon for these organisms and also improve uh, um, soil conservation in that the, the, the mulch can provide some kind of a cover and prevent excessive evaporation from the soil, therefore retaining and improving soil uh, moisture. The third picture shows the net bamboo uh, root network. Most bamboo in the uh, topsoil have fibrous roots and that provides a network for prevention of erosion. It also binds soils together and also retain, help retain soil and also improve porosity and infiltration of uh, air. However, there is also the possibility of competition for nutrients and also water body. Now for the ex situ application, that is where bamboo can be applied. This, the picture here shows that bamboo can be planted along water bodies or riverine areas, repairing areas to prevent siltation. Siltation can decrease water table. Bamboo can be planted to prevent the site that the water table can be uh, um, um, increased and to conserve water. Also, this can uh, uh, ensure that we prevent the drying up of water bodies. The second picture here shows that bamboo can be planted along roads to prevent erosion that might eat into roads. All this up to the contribution of soil embankment and protection of soil from erosion. The, the pictures below here, one is where bamboo has been used to support slopes and to prevent erosion in stabilization in soil bioengineering. The last picture shows in Ghana where bamboo has been used to improve land for land reclamation, where bamboo was used to initiate plant succession and uh, to allow the soil to regain its strength. This was a, a mine area in the western region of Ghana where bamboo was planted after the mine and uh, to reclaim the land by serving as the uh, pioneer species to initiate plant growth in this degraded uh, soil. Now, I move into the case study that I did in Ghana as part of my PhD. The title is Towards Bamboo Agroforestry Development in Ghana. And for this presentation, I captured the effect of bamboo on soil and water conservation. In Ghana, excessive extraction of wood biomass for food and non-food purposes are escalating the uh, deforestation and degradation and also impacting negatively on agricultural productivity such that farmers are not able to meet uh, uh, the food uh, uh, requirement. There's, the, the, there's a big gap between yields and scientists believe that until, well, there's a, until we have a land use in this system that is able to provide both food and non-food biomass for bioenergy purposes. These issues, this problem can never be solved. So the attempt was made to explore other species for, for planting up to solve these two problems of yield loss or yield decline and bioenergy needs. And through literature and other conferences, it was realized that bamboo could be a best bet. Therefore, bamboo agroforestry was explored in the dry semi deciduous forest zone of Ghana. Bamboo agroforestry has been reported in several regions of the world, especially in Asia, China, India, and Nepal, where bamboo agroforestry has been very successful. However, data to prove its, uh, uh, to, to accentuate it in Ghana was lacking, and therefore the need for us to try it was very, very imperative. So three staple food crops in Ghana and in the steady region, maize, kapi, cassava, were, were uh, explored in an intercropping system with bamboo and also monocultures in a split plot design with four replicates. So under agroforestry with bamboo, bamboo with maize, bamboo with kapi, bamboo with cassava, there were six plots and 
one set of plots, that is three, were with fertilizer. The other set was without fertilizer. Then in the monoculture systems, six plots were also laid with one, three, three plots without fertilizer and the other three with uh, fertilizer. So the main plot uh, treatments were the cropping systems and fertilizer was the subplot system. Now, uh, let me scale down to the soil aspect. The work looked at the performance of crops within agroforestry and in monocultures, and then the effects of these cropping systems on soil uh, properties. But for this presentation, I want to limit to the aspect of the soil properties. Here, yeah, initially, the soil properties within the area was taken as a base study. Then 48 samples, that is four from the overall 12 plots were randomly selected and then sent to the laboratory to analyze for nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, cardiac acid capacity, pH and soil moisture. These were the properties that were looked for. We limited ourselves to these properties because these are very important for crop productivity and our focus was for um, crop productivity and soil uh, productivity. So we limited to this uh, species. These were repeated for three years. That is from 2014 to 2016, starting from the minor season of 2014 to the minor season of 2016. And the properties were compared among uh, plots within the agroforestry, bamboo agroforestry and the monocultures. Now, let's go to the results. Now, for table one, I present the um, effect of bamboo on the soil properties. From the table, it's, it's evident that significant changes or improvements in soil moisture, cation acid capacity, available phosphorus, and pH were the key uh, properties that were, that exhibited or that showed significant differences between bamboo agroforestry and monocultures as shown here. And this occurred only in the third year of the research. Although in the previous years there were variations, but they were not significant. The two key tests was used to separate the means and to define the significant uh, levels of the uh, indicators, soil indicators. Table two shows the effect of bamboo with cowpea in one hand and cowpea monoculture in the other hand, similar to that one with maize, soil moisture, cattle exchange capacity, available phosphorus and pH were significantly higher in bamboo agroforestry plots than in monocultures, as highlighted in the red ink. Although there were also variations in the previous years, but they were not significantly uh, different. The changes or the variations also occurred only in the third year of the experiment. Table three shows the effect of bamboo as perused from agroforestry with cassava and cassava monocropping systems. And here again, the changes, significant changes were observed only in the third year. However, for the cassava bamboo agroforestry, only soil moisture and pH were significantly different from the monocultures as observed in, in this table. Yeah, I want to conclude here by making two separate conclusions or statements that regardless of the fertilizer use, uh, significant bamboo effects on soil properties were only observed after two years of the establishment, which means that 
from our research, bamboo can, the effect of bamboo can only be seen after two years, probably within the three years and beyond. That is higher soil moisture, PHC, uh, cation acid capacity and phosphorus were higher, but there were average levels of nitrogen and potassium. This implies that integrating bamboo into farming system is not likely to impact negatively on soil properties, at least within uh, three years of cultivation, but it's probable that it may enhance crop and soil productivity. However, we want to uh, advise that this is not very conclusive uh, for bamboo effects on soil. Although we know literature and for my previous presenters indicated the uh, effects and the contribution of bamboo for bamboo agroforestry using these three crops that we use in a tropical environment like Ghana, we want to encourage that further studies into beyond three years could be done to comprehend what has been uh, recorded now. Finally, I want to conclude that bamboo can have several effects even from in situ application or ex situ application, and this could be positive or negative, but it is mostly dependent on cultural and management practices as well as environmental conditions of the locations. And bamboo could be used for several benefits to improve soil uh, properties, especially soil physical properties. On this note, I want to appreciate the Federal Government, Federal Ministry of Research and Education from Germany, who sponsored this study. They provided a fund for this study through the African Biomass Web Project that was managed by the Center for Development Research of the University of Bonn, where I had my PhD studies. And finally, to IMBA, Ghana, uh, that provided a lot of support for the field study and other presentations. Yeah, for this uh, presentation, uh, anyone who wants to have more details about it can find in agroforest systems, as I've projected, or can consult me. This paper was just uh, published in last last month and provides details about what I have done. On this note, I want to thank audience for the time and attention, and thank you, Yasin and Long, for a good word. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Daniel uh, Akoto uh, Salfo. Uh, great studies that give us uh, scientific information and the implication of integrating bamboo into farming system to enhance crop productivity and uh, soil property. Thank you very much. And uh, now we have uh, delivered uh, all the uh, three uh, presentations. Thank you much to our three speakers, Dr. Rajesh Kosha, Dr. Kamigo, and uh, Dr. Um, Safo. So now it's time to move to the second part of the session to have some interactive discussion. So long over to you to chair the session. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, all the three presenters. And thank you, Zanshia, for bringing me in. Uh, first, I would like to invite three presenters to uh, unmute their audio system. And then um, today we have 18 questions from panel uh, from, from audience. I will read one by one question and any of you uh, willing to answer the question, please raise your hand and I will put it you up for answers. Is that OK? Can you hear me? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Could you could you please unmute the uh, um, microphone? Um, yes. Okay. Good. Yeah, don't worry. Yes. Okay. So I need to put on my glass to read. <laughs> uh, the first question: uh, How bamboo compare with trees on growth water recharge and per correlation, uh, correlations? into acquire that one question here and here in your pre presentation there are comparison between different bamboo species in relation to soil and water uh, generally on a broad lips uh, broader sense can we say bamboo 
is better than tree when it comes to soil and water conservation. What makes it ideal for water and soil conservation? Uh, it is very much relevant to probably to, to uh, Razes. So, uh, Dr. Kausho uh, Razes, please. Okay, uh, as already I have told in my presentation that each part of the bamboo, whether it is a leaf, whether it is a root, all are contributing toward the soil and water conservation. However, one thing it has to be kept in mind, bamboo is used for soil and water conservation only if it is your sheet erosion, splash erosion, or we can say gully stabilization. However, if the erosion is particularly due to subsurface flow, then always it has to be uh, used in conjunction with mechanical measures or with deep rooted trees. So bamboo is particularly suitable because it has a shallow root system. So shallow root system means it can very well check the uh, 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 your sheet erosion and splash erosion, but subsurface flow always you have to accommodate it with the mechanical measure or deep rooted tree. Otherwise, uh, from uh, soil and water conservation point of view, bamboo is an excellent because every part of the bamboo is taking part in soil and water conservation. I, I hope it is uh, answered. OK, yeah, thank you. For the next question here, what species are suggested for prevention landslide at Huli Shine? A similar okay. other question also. Do we have specific bamboo species? effective for slope stabilization? I think the two questions can be the same one. Uh, anyone can answer on this? Okay, uh, should I answer or? Uh, go ahead. Okay, actually whenever we are talking of the landslide, generally we have to avoid those species which are having huge biomass. So generally we are recommending that the species which are not having, uh, which are having less biomass like Thyrostex simensis or Bambusa multiplex. Otherwise, what will happen if the weight is more, then it may so happen that it may get overturned, particularly in the landslide area. So generally, we are recommending that uh, Simensis or Bambusa multiplex should be used in case of landslide area. Though in literature, some, somewhere it has been, Vulgaris has also been mentioned. But uh, I think uh, uh, multiplex is the safest choice. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. That means that you should say like just a small bamboo species, not a huge giant bamboo. And the secondly is running bamboo is a monopodia is perform better than clumping bamboo in most of the case and try to avoid plant clumping bamboo with a large size and tall because it can be washed away entire clump, especially if it go to the river side and then it go along the river, it can block the dam and it can burst the, 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 the breed or whatever. The next question is, what advantage of bamboo? Uh, what advantage can bamboo use at a raspberry uh, vegetation for water conservation measures to protect water, water sheets? Anyone? Um, okay, uh, I would like to 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 yeah. to answer this this question, Lam. And also, I I want to give some compliment to the the first question because. I see it is very important to consider the kind of ecosystems that we have because according to this, we have to uh, get the solution at the proper species. We have different species with different pattern, uh, grow pattern. So this means different uh, conditions uh, to grow and also to protect. And if, one to, if we want, for example, to recover and to restore the ecological function, maybe we have to mix the trees with bamboo, but it depends. But it, bamboo is very useful if we want to get a very fast um, response from soils. OK, and for watershed, uh, it is more or less related because it depends if we want to restore the natural ecosystem, maybe we can include bamboo, of course. It is interesting because we can get some advantage because the time of bamboo to grow is is, is is shorter than trees, for example, but it will be integrated to other kind of species because if we want to recover the functionality of ecosystem, it's better try to get the the more similar to the original condition of ecosystems. Okay, thank you very much. So now in the next one, we're going to select some other questions that is a little bit far. Uh, 
Um, yes. The next question is, uh, does, uh, does a type of bamboo for monopio or symporio have the same conservation system or the same effect on soil and water conservation? Which type of bamboo species more appropriate for soil conservation in humid and dry area? Also hilly area and uh, plan, uh, yeah, to plan area. I'm not sure who would answer this question. I think, but in, in this, it's also general, like we just say above. It depends on the context. Um, on the context of a few things, climatic condition, there are some, some plate is suitable for monoporia bamboo, some is suitable for symporio bamboo. And then the type of choice, some, because there are more than 1600 species of bamboo, some are suitable for the choice, some for two, suitable for other areas. So it is cannot say which one is out, outstanding performance compared to the other one, but it depends on the context. Some plate can be this species, but other plate can be other, uh, other species. Sometimes small, tiny species can be performed better than giant bamboo species, like what uh, Dr. Razat just said before. In the landslide area, larger bamboo species are not performing well. Um, the next one is the bamboo in urban area planted for urban green space, along with soil and water conservation and protection. Is there any difference between soil and water conservation and protection? Uh, can anyone answer this? I think the main question is, is a difference between conservation, uh, soil and water conservation, and uh, soil and water protection? Okay, maybe I will add because the, the, the title of my presentation is related with protection. So, because yeah. uh, when I, I mean that it, when I, I talk about protection, I try to anticipate to the events. So it is a conservation represent activities after that to try to keep a condition natural or transformative condition. But in my case, I try to talk about the, the previous state in order to avoid uh, some situation negative uh, in, in this case to avoid soil degradation or, or water um, degradation. Mm. OK, thank you. There is a question, anyone uh, have any study on this to answer? What is the maximum water holding capacity of good uh, grow bamboo plantation? Probably per unit, one hectare. Is that any of you have study on this? Even good with uh, Razat? Actually, in literature, somewhere it has been mentioned, particularly uh, in Indian context, no study has been made so far. But in China, some study has been there that uh, the water holding capacity of bamboo is about 21 ton per hectare. So that is the uh, one figure I have got from somewhere, 21 ton per yeah. hectare. So yeah. uh, that is the only, uh, that is in Phyllostachys pubescens. But uh, in Sympodial bamboo, no such kind of study is available. Okay, thank you very but much. I, 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 wa I want to complement this as well. But if we measure the uh, holding capacity, we measure on soil properties, and it will depend on soil, on the texture of soil. For example, if we, we if we if we have a more porous space, we will have more capacity. Of uh, we mm. depend. So mm. this is my point. Okay. The next question is: Can bamboo do well along or near the seashore? Which species, if any? Anyone know about that? Um, if either way can I say on it, one is like it. It's just near the seashore, but the condition is like it. Furthermore, if soil is not intrusion by the water, it's not sorted by the water, then bamboo can grow there well. But the condition, as the condition go along with it is, what type of climatic condition, what type of soil is there? Because it is near the sea is one thing, but the soil condition and the, the weather condition 
it's more important that can, can bamboo grow it there. Yeah. But at long as it's no short water intrusion, then bamboo can grow. Maybe I can yeah, also. Yeah, I want to share a, a, a practical case in, uh, that in Thailand they use bamboo uh, to protect their seashore. But uh, it's not a group plant bamboo there. They just uh, use a bamboo stick uh, as a wall, physically as a wall to 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 uh, uh, stop the waves, uh, crush uh, uh, crush the uh, seashore. So they they will replace the bamboo sticks um, for several years after. So that's the case can be found in our uh, Imba publication. And let's get restoration with bamboo. I think uh, Dr. Uh, Daniel has uh, something to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, like uh, Long said, uh, we, if you want to uh, plant bamboo or any tree species along uh, the sea or seashore, we need to evaluate the soil and see what uh, what. Um, uh, nutrients we need to uh, make sure is there before we plant. So like any other plant species, planting along the seashore requires some kind of effort input to, to make sure they are established. However, bamboo comparatively will require less input as compared to most uh, 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 three species of plants as have been uh, done across mangrove areas and other areas similar to seashores. So the point is, it can be done, but some much effort needs to be done. But compared to other plants, bamboo require will require less effort than the other uh, plant species. Oh. And I have a question for um, uh, for Daniel. At your study, you can see that a lot of uh, soil nu uh, nutrition improve from the soil quality. But and we see that bamboo is fat growing. It's fast growing, we expect that it takes a lot of nutrition. When we do agroforestry with bamboo, can any other species uh, go along with bamboo there? And what type model structure so can other crop can grow with bamboo? Especially, do we have any study compared to nutrition? What are the nutrition taken by bamboo? What nutrition released by bamboo? Which are other species can complement with bamboo. Thank you. That's a question. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Long. Uh, in our study, we looked at three staple crops from uh, Ghana and we used five meter by five meter planting distance. And the crops were planted along the alleys as within this five meter spacing. So by structure, uh, not at all. 2009 reported that the minimum bamboo can go for agricultural crop integration is five meters. But we need to explore other uh, planting distances and see beyond that. And uh, for the nutrients, uh, from our study, realized that nitrogen, nitrogen and uh, potassium and uh, phosphorus were uh, relatively used uh, along. However, these were supported with fertilizer application to bring to a minimum so that even if the bamboo, which is known to be a feeder, the grass, is to take up nitrogen, the supplement from the inorganic fertilizer would provide um, levels for, for the initial stages. But over two years, when the bamboo has grown with litter fall and other inputs, canopy, a crown formation, there were gradual improvements in the uh, soil properties. That's why we see a considerable increase in soil water and um, uh, pH and cation estuary capacity. But nitrogen and phosphorus remained relatively low during this period. We will need to explore beyond three years and see if this can be sustained over the period. But for the three years, nitrogen and potassium were relatively used, but uh, the uh, uh, soil moisture and uh, um, pH, CH, uh, CEC were relatively higher for bamboo. That's what I can say for now. Okay. Um, 
thank thank you very much that as a one it glow which uh, as a crop can intercropping with bamboo it depend on the number of thing nutrition co uh, competition and then the shade to tolerant as well and as the bamboo uh, usually have dense uh, can no be cover yeah. very very dense if you a many species it cannot grow under that condition not only nutrition and one on aspects but just a second one is a canopy cover very dense there are some species that more shade tolerant can grow well with bamboo for example you plant turmeric or ginger under bamboo and they grow yes. very well and then sure. some number of jam species jam species also can grow very well with bamboo um the next question I'm not sure it is it one is to come from uh, weak countries, but yeah, the reason why people did not take our bamboo in the river size is be because of its environmental role or because of the cost of uh, opportunities and the complication of legal requirement to harvest. This the question is asking that why people don't cut the bamboo when they plant it along the river side. But I don't know from which country I asked him to please explain more detail, but I don't have the response on it. So we don't know which reason is it. Is that it's because of environmental raw bamboo, so they don't cut it, or because of uh, harvest, maybe by law they cannot harvest. it. But um, it is from Alvari, Caberan. I don't know, uh, Caberan, anyone know uh, uh, who is it? The question for whom? But uh, okay, um, in, in the case of Colombia, uh, we have a bamboo along the rivers, and according to our law, our code, we have to give a special management uh, to these areas. In some cases, it is permitted only to cut, but collect for domestic or commercial uses, because we have in, in the code a, a, um, a space from 30 meters from the stream in order to avoid any kind of approach. But also, if these areas are with a relief, a very steep relief, it is also difficult to extract or collect the cans harvested. So it is uh, one of the reasons, maybe. OK. So it's the next, we have also a number of questions coming on here. Um, one is, do, do we have any have species that are so tolerant uh, for bamboo? So far, I don't know any about that. Anyone know about that? Yeah, please, can you come again? Uh, do we have uh, species, a uh, bamboo species that are so tolerant? They can grow short. in the short end. Uh, yeah, short. Short. Yeah. Seashore. Yeah. Seashore, right? Yeah, seashore. Uh, yeah. At ALT, my pronunciation, sorry for that. <laughs> no. no. So, uh, should I give the answer? Yeah, please. If you know, then. Actually, uh, we have gone to Madagascar once and we have seen that bambusa, vulgaris, and bambusa bamboos, they were performing uh, good, particularly. Uh, in this sandy soil. So yeah. maybe uh, to some extent these two species can be tried. They may give some better result as compared to other species. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, at, um, we, we know it's not um, not specific any species can grow there, but it may be difficult to, to find a species. And even bamboo also doesn't grow on the peatland. But I knew that in Indonesia they try to test some species that they can bamboo grow on the peatland or not? The next question here is, can bamboo plants as a hot plants on sandal plantation? If there is, it's possible, and which species is suitable for planting? It means that make planting in sandal, uh, sandal wood plantation. Sandal wood plantation. Yeah, anyone know about that? Shot, shot, shot rotation? Um, I think it is a hot plant. They want to, uh, bamboo at a hot plant. So it means bamboo plant it first there and then sandalwood plant go under and mix. No, it is, uh, 
it is difficult actually with bamboo sandalwood growing of sandalwood it will be difficult because both are light demanding species so it will be a yeah. problematic uh, yeah. it's not the question of host plant but it is the question of light so light uh, intensity will be declined and uh, sandalwood probably will not take up under bamboo yeah so if I it has to be then spacing has to be uh, increased yeah that is a two two light demand uh, light demanding species if you do uh, intercropping mixing then it's not possible. Uh, it is it is a uh, preventing each other, competing sunlight with each other. It may not suitable. But they are also possible that you can do any cup strip mix. One strip, strip of sandalwood, one strip of bamboo. Bamboo will form a protection, soil and water protection. While as a main crop, you can also use uh, the sandalwood in the between there. That is also could be growing well. But probably uh, uh, they are asking for particularly the host species. Na? The host species yeah. require uh, a root system should be connected. If we are uh, making some strips, then the host connection will not be there. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, sandal be. is a semi-parasitic plant, so require a host species for its growth. So that yeah. may not work uh, probably. Yeah. What I feel. Um, the uh, next question here, I see it here it, in Ghana, probably maybe um, uh, Daniel, what is your opinion yeah. on the application of bamboo for re for a restoration practice and the way for what to combat as a land use problem? Yeah, thank you. Uh, as I indicated in the background of my presentation, uh, bamboo has been used to reclaim land, to restore a mined site, a mine site that was degraded. Bamboo was used to restore. So there are clear examples where bamboo has been, uh, has been, has been shown or proven to bring uh, uh, degraded lands for other uh, plants to initiate uh, plant succession. So now, uh, what the way forward in Ghana is for us to consider bamboo as um, uh, one of the major crops uh, trees for land reclaiming in our policies and then give it out to forestry commission to experiment and then expand or upscale it because it's been proven through research over the years i think it was done in 2006 by dr pepper at the forestry research institute of ghana and they are proving that bamboo can uh, initiate uh, Lands, uh, plant succession and therefore reclaim the uh, degraded lands. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there's a question here probably that um, I'm not sure for for Razat or, or Dr. Um, Joan here. It, have you include water balance study under natural bamboo stand and implantation? The water balance here, including rainfall, interception, through fall and infiltration, transpiration and runoff. Uh, actually, this year we have studied, uh, we are trying to study the water balance. Already we have made some uh, runoff plots and we are gauging all the runoff soil loss and infiltration. Everything will be done. So water balance studies, this year it has been started. So maybe the result may come after four, five years. So, but we have initiated this study. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the other question from Carlo is asking how bamboo help to increase the size of top soil in Amazon Azure. I'm not sure which they mean with um, with the size of top soil here. Uh, is a thick layer or what? Yeah. But uh, can anyone answer or look at it? How bamboo help to increase the size of top soil in Amazon area? <laughs> Um, okay, blonde. It depends because if if we have a, a bamboo within the forest, we have some species there. We have a woody species. We have a herbaceous species, and the contribution will be according to the the role of these bamboo species within the uh, the whole ecosystem. But if we start with a new plantation because the the forest uh, has been eliminated. In this case, it is interesting because in the Amazonian area, 
we have a very old soils and with low values of organic matter. So with bamboo, maybe we can try to increase these values, but maybe the, the time that it takes will be very long in order to get a, an increment of soil organic matter because we have a high temperature, high rainfall, and the dynamic is very fast. So okay. it depends. Okay, thank you very much. And I, I think we will make a lot of questions because of the part times is a lot of question. It's it's at if bamboo is harvested harvested regularly, won't it allow more sunlight to allow for more, uh, more sun demanding species to grow under it? And then I also could answer this question. As bamboo is harvested regularly, here we harvest it. So when bamboo is harvested, there should be open space for sunlight to go through, and then the other crop can grow. Um, okay, my question say on it. There are a few things. You are correct that when you plant bamboo, you can harvest it annually. But the, in the bamboo is like this. You select it, do selective harvesting. So well, mostly in the big clump, you select the old palm in center and harvest it. You have it in general. You open the spray a bit, but there are many remaining palms there. At least two thirds of the palms still there in one clump. And then this support uh, create an, enough shade for other the light demanding species difficult to grow. So in one, if you want to plant only short term species, but and the second one is after the harvesting, only a few months later. For example, in the raining season, uh, raining place, in tropical place, they harvest them during dry season, around in January, winter from December, January to February, and then the next, the shooting season will come, start from May, June, August until September, July, like that. This only very short window. You have about three months, and the canopy is still uh, not completely open. Even you have it, you can read a bit, but canopy is still uh, very, very dense. They have any short window. It also it make it difficult for some other species to fall into the uh, uh, window of time for, for growing. Uh, I think there's also a uh, two points to to uh, related is uh, we, we know the uh, rhizome and the root system of bamboo is very shallow. So when we develop the um, bamboo plantation or bamboo forest, normally you have to consider you plant uh, or incorporate some uh, uh, deep rooted uh, uh, species with bamboo. To uh, to give more uh, the uh, to 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 st stabilize the soil, uh, especially for the sloping areas, and this uh, uh, and the second, I think it, it's related to the management practice of bamboo plantations because we all know without uh, management practice, bamboo comes will die after like uh, ten years, they will uh, dry and die. Uh, and the other species well uh, 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 occupied the ecological niche in the uh, uh, system. So I think uh, it relates to the uh, uh, species uh, uh, planning uh, in the land, and also you have to consider the ecological uh, niche of the species for the uh, species competitions, and also the management practice, so to maintain the. Uh, or plantation, yes, that way. Okay, I think that we already passed the time for 15 minutes, and um, I think I uh, would like to thanks to all our three excellent presenter and addressing all uh, the questions. And we also would like to thank to all the audience for your time and the improvise our input with some interesting questions as well. Um, we would like to uh, inform you that 
some people already asking for report and presentation. Uh, the re the presenter uh, present PPTs of the three presentation will be shared in our uh, in our website. You go to the webinar and yes, uh, events. Yes, you can find out the place to download P uh, PPT, but in uh, PDF file. Second one is that the presentation of the webinar session today is recorded. We will upload it to YouTube and then to share the answer. If you are interested, you can review and you can share with the others there. And we also last one we will try to uh, I share with you the feedback uh, link there. Would you please give your feedbacks and with your email? If any of your questions we did not uh, direct today, we can respond to you in personally. And then uh, any your comment, what, what subject, subject you, you want, want to hear, hear more, more, what you uh, advise us how to improve, please put in there so we can improve our next session and then as well as prepare some sessions that uh, meet your expectations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank and you. I think yeah. before we end Thank the you. session, I would like to uh, inform you our upcoming uh, session uh, webinar webinar sessions. So next Tuesday, 7th of July, we will have the first webinar series on landscape restoration with bamboo. The same time uh, as today, it's uh, 7 30 to 9 p.m. Beijing time. So the session will share the experience around the world and discuss the challenges and the solutions for landscape restoration with bamboo. So you will find the detailed information and also the webinar links uh, in, web, uh, in, in the uh, website.